Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to cross training. Hope that everybody is having a good evening. All right. Cross training. What is it and why are we doing it? First of all, I want to say that cross training is a online live streaming class for new believers. Um, this curriculum has been used in churches amongst uh, those who are pastors and leaders who are looking for curriculum to help those who are new believers in their walk with Christ. This curriculum is specifically designed for those who are new to Christianity, um, who are saved for three years or less, and you want to get some understanding as to your faith, as to some of the basic principles of the Christian faith, and to understanding things like spiritual warfare, spiritual gifts, what does it mean to be um, a part of the body of Christ, um, prayer, the Holy Spirit. So we're answering and we're going to go through each session and we're going to take our time and give you something that has to do with your faith. So again, this curriculum was designed to help people after they got saved, after they gave their life to the Lord at the altar to begin to sit down and understand the principles of the faith and understand what it is that it means to be saved. So again, this course is not for, you know, seasoned believers, but this is a course designed for those who are new believers in Christ. All right. So our first session is entitled, I'm saved, now what? And we're also doing our live stream in the Facebook group. So if you are on Facebook, you can find us at Cross Training New Believers. And inside of that group, you will find all of the information that we are going over um, here, but you'll find it in the format where you can go through the information yourself and also take notes. So if you're interested, in joining that Facebook group, I encourage you to do so because you'll be able to get the information that you're learning here on the broadcast and you'll be able to go through it yourself and also refresh your memory, all right? Because we do have files that we upload into the Facebook group. So when you gave your life to Christ, you literally became a new creature. You literally became a new creation. What does this mean? All right. In John chapter three, verses five through seven, Jesus began to speak about this process. And he said this, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. So we know that the concept of being born again, or when someone says, I'm a born again believer, they're talking about the process of salvation. They're talking about the process of Christ making us new in our spiritual man. Because we know that through the fall of Mankind, through the sin of Adam, the original sin, what is called the original sin, right? Mankind lost that fellowship with the Lord. Mankind, through the original sin of Adam, fell into a place where those who are born into the world are born with a sin nature, all right? You didn't ask to be born into the world, but if you were born into the world, you were born with a sin nature, which is why Jesus tells the young man who asked in this particular passage that flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to the spirit. 
you must be born again. So he's not talking about a physical birth where a person crawls back into their mother's womb and comes out again, but he's talking about a spiritual birth. So if you are a Christian and you have chosen to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have now begun to be a part of a body of believers and you have become a new creature by faith. So when someone says, I'm saved, now what? The first thing is understanding what it is you actually did. Maybe you, you went to an altar on a Sunday morning and you um, repeated after the person who was praying with you at the altar. Maybe you weren't in church when you decided to give your life to the Lord. Maybe you were like me. I was you know, in, in a room when I decided that I'm going to give my life to the Lord and make the decision to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior and receive his blood sacrifice in exchange for my sinfulness. All right. So Jesus tells us no one can claim salvation without the spirit of God giving birth to the human spirit, giving new birth to the human spirit. So when you hear the term born again, this is what Christians are referring to. Okay. It's not just some catchy phrase <laughs> that Christians made up. Jesus specifically says in the scriptures, you must be born again. That's John chapter three, verse seven. All right. So let's take a look at another verse of scripture, second Corinthians five and 17. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. And it reads thus. If anyone belongs to Christ, there is a new creation. The old things have gone. Everything is made new. Another scripture that we want to take a look at is Titus chapter 3 verse 5. Titus chapter 3 verse 5. And it reads... He saved us because of his mercy. It was not because of good deeds we did to be right with him. He saved us through the washing that made us new people through the Holy Spirit. So we are not made new by our own works. We are made new by the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that allows us to be made new. So when he gave your life, when you gave your life to Christ, okay, he renewed your spirit by the spirit of God. He didn't renew your body, right? He didn't renew uh, your soul. Your soul is something that has to be renewed daily and it's renewed by reading the word of God and beginning to live out of the word of God. But he renewed, God, Christ renewed your spirit by the spirit of God. So, why did we need a savior to begin with? Why did we need a savior to begin with? Let's look at Isaiah 59 verse 2. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2. Isaiah 59 verse 2. Let's start at verse 1. Surely the Lord's power is enough to save you. He can hear you when you ask him for help. But it is your sins that have separated you from your God. Your sins cause him to turn away from you so he does not hear you. With your hands you may have killed others and with your fingers you have done wrong. So why did we need a savior? According to this verse, it is sin that separates us from God. Sin separates us from God. Okay. So that's why we needed a savior because sin separated us from God. 
let's take a look at a couple of things here I want to share with you. And then our session for tonight, believe it or not, is going to be over because this is an introduction. All right, so we have one verse of scripture that talks to us about our need to be born again. That's John chapter three, verses five through six. Then we have scripture that explains our need for salvation. That's Isaiah 59, verses one and two. All right, then we have Titus three and five that tells us about our renewed spirit and that we are renewed in our spirit by the Holy Spirit. Then we are now going to look at Revelations chapter 12 verses 9 through 10 because now that we understand that we need to be born again, now that we know that the Holy Spirit is the one who renews our spirit, that's what happens in salvation. Now that we understand that sin separates us from God, so that's why we needed a savior because Christ has come to take away what separates us from God and that is sin. We know that our righteousness cannot save us, but it is through faith in Jesus Christ. Let's look at what Revelations tells us in light of these things. Revelations chapter 12 verses 9 through 10. Revelations chapter 12, verses 9 and 10 says this. One more page over. All right. The giant dragon was thrown out of heaven. He is that old snake called the devil or Satan who tricks the whole world. The dragon with his angels was thrown down to the earth. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, The salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ has now come. The accuser of our brothers and sisters who accused them day and night before our God has been thrown down. And our brothers and sisters defeated him by the blood of the lamb and by the testimony by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid of death. So you have three things we overcome by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimony and by being fearless and not loving our life unto death. So we are not saved by working hard to obey the 10 commandments. We are not saved by joining a local church. We are saved by grace through faith in the blood atonement and the blood sacrifice that was shed on the cross by Jesus the Christ. That's how we are saved. And because of that salvation, because of that sacrifice, we can now testify of our salvation to other people. And because we know that there will be people that will not receive this truth, that there is a possibility that you can be persecuted for the truth that you're sharing, this is why you cannot love your life unto death. Because there is a real possibility that people will hate you for your testimony and people will not receive the sacrifice of Jesus the Christ as an atonement for sin. As a matter of fact, there are some people who don't believe in sin. They don't even believe in it as a concept. So as a Christian, we believe in the concept of sin. We believe that there are certain things that God requires of us that if we disobey the word of God, or if we commit those things that God deems as sin, there are consequences for those things. All right? So who can be saved? Who is salvation for? Salvation is not for the devil. All right? He can never be saved. So let's make that clear. 
Salvation is not for animals. Salvation is for human beings. That's who salvation is for. All right. So as we saw in the scripture, Revelations chapter 12 verses uh, 9 through 11, there is one person who accuses the people of God. One person. And that is not God. That is not Jesus the Christ. That is Satan, otherwise known as the devil. So the person who accuses the people of God is not God himself. It's not Jesus the son. It is the devil. So if you are encountering people <laughs> who have a propensity to bring accusations against people, they could be working for the enemy. They're certainly not working for God. All right. So confessing with the mouth and believing in the heart that Jesus is Lord is the essence of salvation. It's not the essence of going to church. It's not the essence of getting blessings. It is the crux of salvation. All right. So Jesus is not only savior, but he's also Lord. What does that mean? That means that you are giving or you are allowing Christ to be head over your life. When someone is a Lord, okay, in the, in the term, in the definition of a Lord, it's someone who has control over your decision making. And as far as salvation goes, we are supposed to be seeking God in our decision making. If you are a new believer, if you are a Christian, if you have said, you know, I'm going to give my life over to the Lord Jesus Christ, I am going to begin to live out this truth in this reality of Christianity, then that means that you're getting into the word and that you're studying what is it that Christ actually said and then you are following through on what it is that Christ actually taught. All right. So as we close, I want to give you this opportunity. Those of you who are live streaming on Periscope and um, those of you who are in the group, in the Facebook group, you can actually type your answer in the Facebook group. But those of you who are watching on live stream, you can ask this, answer this question. If you had 60 seconds to share your salvation story with someone else, how would you get started? How would you get started? So think about the scripture, Revelations 12, 10 and 11, where he says, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. Right? So we have to understand that salvation and power come from the kingdom of God and it comes from Christ's authority in your life. The accuser who used to accuse you and make you feel guilty day and night, the scripture says he has been cast down. He has been cast down. So if you have given your life to Christ and you are still feeling guilt and shame, then you need to remember that the person who tried to make you feel guilt and shame, the, the real source of that is the devil. Because God has not come to shame those who have given their life over to him. Okay? So we overcome and we affirm our salvation by the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony, and we don't shrink back from the possibility of death. So it's important that now that you are saved, that you begin to testify to others about your salvation and about how God saved you. And one of the things that we do is um, a lot of times people will say, well, my testimony of how I got saved or how I came to Christ, it may be very, very, very detailed. And sometimes you don't have a whole lot of time to share with other people how you came to know the Lord. So a good way to break down your testimony that you can share it very briefly with someone is you can break it up into three parts. B, 
before you met Christ, what were you doing? Sum it up. When you met Christ, what happened in that instance? Sum it up. And as you live for Christ, what is your goal going forward? So here's an example. Before Christ, I was selfish. I was um, very into myself. I was very prideful. And I was involved in lots of different kinds of things that violated God's word and God's commandments for how people are supposed to live. When I met Christ, it was a life-changing experience. I had a personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, which was confirmed by his word so that I knew that I had encountered Christ and not some other spirit. And as I live for Christ, I have found freedom in my ability to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. I often had a problem with people who would live very hypocritical lives. But as I come to know Christ and he filled me with his Holy Spirit, I realized and recognized that nobody can live a saved life without the power of the Holy Spirit. So I thank God for the power of the Holy Spirit that allows me to live the truth and not just recite the truth. Because of the Holy Spirit, I can operate in love, joy, goodness, peace, kindness, patience, gentleness. I am most excited when people recognize that the fruit of God is evident in my life and I don't have to tell them because I'm walking out the word of God every single day. I don't always get it right. And when I don't get it right, I'm reminded of the word. 1 John 1 and 9 that says, if we sin, we have an advocate with Jesus the Christ. We can confess our sins and he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So the way that I stay in right relationship with God is that when I sin, okay, I ask for forgiveness and I repent. I don't hold on to it. I don't say, oh, it doesn't matter to God. I repent, all right? And in repenting, the scripture promises that God is faithful and just to forgive us for our sins. That is an ongoing promise, all right? So I recommend either getting a journal or getting a notebook for these sessions if you're taking notes. I also recommend that you spend some time actually thinking about and writing out how you would share with somebody your testimony and be able to communicate your testimony in two to three minutes at the most, all right? So remember this, Romans 10, 9 and 9. This is a scripture that um, most people in churches use this scripture during the altar service um, you know, maybe at the end of a pastor speaking, they may ask people to come up and you might have heard the scripture. It says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. So understand that if you have chosen Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you have shared that testimony and shared that truth with somebody else, you are a believer. It doesn't mean that you're not going to make mistakes. It doesn't mean that you're not going to ever commit a sin again. What it does mean is is that you are relying on the blood of Christ to cleanse you from all sin. And you receive that forgiveness. And the scripture clearly tells us that if we sin, if we confess that he is faithful and just to forgive us of all sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So this is cross training session one. I'm saved. Now what? I'll tell you the now what. The now what is you continue to 
to live your life. You continue your walk in Christ, but you also begin to share your testimony of how Christ changed your life. We'll be back next Thursday with session two, which is letting go of your past, because we know that that can be a hindrance once you are newly saved. We're going to talk about letting go of people. How do I break off relationships or how do I break off unhealthy friendships, right? Letting go of activities that, you know, come into conflict with the scriptures that you're now learning and that you are now walking out. How do I let go of stereotypes, you know, there are sometimes people that are involved in your life that think that you're supposed to act one way. Um, but now that you're in Christ, your lifestyle is changing. Your walk is changing. Your thought process is changing. So what do you do with that? And then how do you let go of things? All right. That can be circumstances or that can actually be physical things that you are involved with. So next Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going into session two, letting go of your past. Is this, if this has helped you today, if this has helped you tonight, I want you to shoot me an email at reshante at gmail.com. If you're interested in the Facebook group, if you email me, I will send you the Facebook group link and you can join us in the group. All right. Thank you again so much for this time. I hope that you all are blessed. Take care and have a great evening. See you next week.